Hello? Okay. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, thanks for everybody coming, willing to see my presentation. Thanks for the guys staying here because it's silent and comfortable and uh, avoid me the shame of an empty room. Today, we will uh, talk about a use case uh, about Europe and OpenStack. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Mariano Cugnetti. I'm, uh, I'm from Italy. I'm from a company named Enter. We are based in Milan. We were an ISP. Now we are a cloud service provider or CSP. Uh, I am currently the CTO and I'm uh, uh, in charge of all the cloud activities in my company. Today I will explain you a use case uh, about Europe uh, willing to extend their cloud infrastructure. So, uh, almost one year ago, more than one year ago, uh, in January 2015, the EU published uh, a tender uh, that was intended to, uh, to be a request for proposal to all the cloud providers, um, global cloud providers, in order to uh, acquire uh, external cloud services. Uh, it was meant to provide services to all the 52 institutions that build up the uh, EU. Uh, EUs like, uh, like the US have different agencies on the territory. They are uh, dispersed on the territory. Uh, and they provide different kind of activities from the, uh, the EU Court of Justice, the EU Commission, uh, the EU uh, Council, the EU Parliament, and up to the uh, European Food Safety as, uh, Agency or uh, uh, ENISA for uh, security information. So uh, this tender was published, and the objective of this uh, tender were two mainly. The first one was to migrate existing workloads from uh, internal data centers that were spread all around Europe uh, with a um, consistent uh, waste of money for the EU. And the second objective was to start an innovation strategy in order to acquire a new way to approach technical problems and in order to build uh, a, an elasticity and innovation uh, and flexibility in managing the cloud services. The first one was, if you cannot solve the problem, please move it. And the second one was, okay, we need to start from scratch on something we don't uh, handle very well. So uh, the key point for this uh, were mainly two explicit and one implicit. The first one was reducing the costs, as I told you before. The second one was to enforce uh, the security of data managed by all the institutions, and uh, especially in a special regard to the um, data protection, the data, personal data. The third objective was to provide portability across different providers. So they published an RFP, but they wanted to be sure, I just turned on, turned, turned off everything, okay, sorry, uh, to be sure they could change at any time uh, the provider they were using. Uh, let me just give you a brief overview of what's happening uh, in Europe about data protection. Uh, the new data, data protection law is the, the law that rules the management of personal data of uh, citizens and users, obviously, in the EU. It was dated 1995, and until last month, it was not changed, okay? So it was pretty old. Uh, last month, it was published, it was released a new version of this data protection that mainly covers these eight topics, the right to be forgotten, I don't want anybody to store my data anymore. Easier access to personal data means I want to know what kind of personal data you are managing uh, on my behalf. I want to be able to move my personal data from one provider to another. Uh, I'm talking about providers, doesn't mean only cloud providers, it means also Facebook or Google or what else. Um, a clear affirmative action when consent is required. A, use, a citizen, a EU citizen, must be clearly aware of what he's doing or she's doing when she is bringing uh, his or her data to a provider. Uh, the information must be very clear and transparent. When, when I give you uh, a clearance and uh, allow you to manage my data, I must be very well informed. And I must be informed if the provider uh, is um, 
has been breached somehow. There are been, uh, it's, it's been hacked somehow. I have uh, 36 to 72 hours to be informed uh, by the provider. Uh, improved administrative and judicial remedies, which means that so far, uh, all the national laws uh, were pretty different. Every country in Europe had, had different laws, so now the EU is, is saying everybody, okay, now let's rule everybody with one single law. You will apply this law, and so we, it will be much more clear to anybody uh, if you want to act against any data breach, this is what you have to do. And the responsibility is increased for the providers managing your data. So this is the content uh, of the of the tender, it was divided in three lots. Uh, the first lot was covering uh, private YAS. Uh, it was a single framework contract, which means uh, one single winner, no reopening. And for lot two and lot three, which were respectively covering uh, public YAS and public pass, it was a reopening, which means the winners, the awarded uh, providers, would be put in a competition again after they've been awarded or uh, they've been uh, eligible to provide uh, those services. So, public EAS and public PASS. The total amount of money uh, the EU uh, provided for all of these three lots were 34 million euros, which is a pretty amount of money of an, over a four-year time span, which means two plus one plus, plus one. So you, have, you can have contracts for the first two years, and then they can be renewed for one and then one other year. The documentation was very uh, heavy. Uh, I can personally say that because I studied it day and night, and it was very, very detailed. So they wanted to be sure to cover all the aspects. It was very well written. It was written by someone that has studied, has done its, his own work very well. Um, what about our lot? We, are, uh, we were involved in lot two because we are a public cloud provider. Uh, as I told you, the requirements were very detailed. They started with the EU privacy compliance. They wanted to be sure that anybody participating in the tender should be, could be subject to any audit by EU, um, how can I say, commissioners that could come to the site, to provide the site and check if for the policies, the security policies were in place. Uh, data center were an issue. They wanted to have the data centers in Europe. Uh, and multiple data centers are, were required at a distance uh, of, of at least 100 kilometers one from each other, better if in different countries. Network, on the networking side, they asked very advanced features. They wanted to have uh, not only IPv6, they wanted also to have the ability to configure load balancing as a service, to have uh, IPS and IDS. This was a bit tricky. Uh, so it was very detailed on the networking side. Compute, very standard features. Uh, flavors ranging from two gigabyte up to 100 gigabyte in the Amazon and OpenStack flavor uh, approach. They wanted to have uh, the possibility to make snapshots. Uh, uh, they wanted to have uh, uh, the ability also to uh, define who could do something on compute nodes, uh, who could run instances but not destroy them, not resize, etc. So a role-based access, access and control. On the block and object storage side, they wanted typical OpenStack uh, services, uh, block storage. They wanted to have flavors or um, Cinder volume types uh, in the OpenStack language. So they wanted to have different performances, at least four, ranging from archiving to SSD-like uh, uh, type. They also asked for self-encryption disk, self-encrypted disk or Opal uh, drives uh, to be uh, connected to the Cinder or to the block storage provider. On the object storage side, they wanted to be sure that there were some features like uh, uh, the uh, versioning of the file, expiration date, uh, temporary URLs. Uh, uh, they wanted to be sure that uh, there was enough replica uh, for the data across all the data centers. They wanted to ingest a lot of data either by network or by sending these drives to the, the provider site. Um, on the managed services, they wanted ITIL compliant services. So they wanted the provider to be able to assist the customers and to provide information in a following a precise framework. 
very enterprise-like uh, approach. On the security, which was one of the most consistent part in the, in the, um, in the tender, uh, they wanted to be sure that every action inside the, uh, the cloud platform was uh, auditing, so they wanted to add audit logs for uh, network uh, configuration changes, uh, for object storage activity. They wanted uh, to know uh, how many people could gain access, what kind of access, what level of uh, permissions they had, etc. Uh, SLAs uh, should be measured on a, on a monthly basis. They wanted to be sure that SLAs were not related just to APIs, but also to infrastructure. So if you are declaring an SLA for, uh, I, I mean, uh, VMs or for compute, they are not saying you want to provide API access for 100%, but they want the VM, the single VM to be reachable 100% out of a month. Support, uh, multilingual support. They wanted to have an, uh, at least English and one European language. Could be French, could be German, could be Spanish, or in our case, Italian. Billing and pricing. This is a very uh, important point for them. Every single expense in the EU must be previously approved. So every time you sign a contract, they just tell you, we are going to spend maximum this amount of money, okay? Even if they go on a consumption basis, they tell you in advance how much money they are going to uh, allow for that project. So they want to be sure to, to, to be in control of the expenditure they have on your platform. So they require a lot of reports and graphs uh, and day-by-day -day consumption. They want to know everything. And the last one, it's environmental impact. They wanted to be, uh, they, want, they provided more points to the providers that had uh, certifications like uh, 14,000 in place, which is the environmental impact uh, certification, and to be sure that no, there, were, there was no um, power waste or uh, footprint, in, uh, too much carbon footprint uh, by running your data center. In some cases, we found explicit references to OpenStack, in which cases, in object storage, they, when they said, we want to be sure the object storage must, must be, the objects in the object storage must be portable, they referred explicitly to OpenStack Swift. Uh, architecture, transparency, and compatibility, they asked the provider to declare, uh, providing more points, it was, man it was not mandatory, but if you declare uh, your underlying architecture, may the hypervisor, the orchestrator, etc. they would provide you more points, but they were providing more points if you were running OpenStack. And the third one, when they asked for APIs should reflect industry standards, they explicitly referred to OpenStack, okay? So uh, there might be the case of someone uh, with some homebrewed solution providing APIs but not compliant with the industry standard. They ask for more uh, compliance to allow more, more portability. So the, <clears throat> the main goal for the, the EU was to avoid any vendor lock-in. They, they wanted to bring the data and the processes out of the, their data centers, but they didn't want to find themselves tomorrow locked in into someone, some big uh, provider's data center. Other references to other um, competitors of ours, VMware. Initially, they asked for live migration, mandatory. Uh, at, at the first stage of the tender participation, we were allowed to ask questions. Uh, in one night, I posted, I personally posted 70 questions uh, because uh, we were not agreeing with some of the requirements. I mean, in our vision, when you ask for cloud services, it means uh, you're talking about instances and not virtual machines. So uh, the workloads uh, can move across instances. If you use the proper techniques, you can just uh, get rid of a VM and build another. You can snapshot and rebuild, etc. So having live migration sh should have, mean, have meant a, a huge impact on our design. So we just asked a lot of questions, and the guy on the other side was very smart. We were very happy to find some uh, intelligent person on the other side. Uh, agreed on the fact that asking for a mandatory migration, a live migration, would mean 
uh, to shrink the uh, options just to a few, one, a few ones and not to include all the other ones. So they ask for RBAC and uh, IAM like uh, Amazon IAM like uh, uh, role based access and control, which with OpenStack is a bit tricky so far, and audit trails like Cloud Trails. So uh, at the end of the day, they just cherry pick the best uh, of breed. They wanted to build their own cloud by getting the best, uh, the most out of the, the market. So uh, now it's up to the team, what we did. Uh, anybody familiar with this uh, movie? Old enough to be familiar with the Goonies? Okay, if you are not, uh, check it on imdb.com. So this is uh, actually a selfie uh, we have shot in front of the EU Commission the first time we were invited after the award. Uh, and we have Diego on the left, so from the left, Diego Cabesudo from Gigas, Alexandre Steiner and Delphine Goujon from uh, Numagi, and on top me and Ivan Botta, the CEO of Enter, is here tomorrow, uh, today with me. So uh, together we have built the Cloud Team Alliance. We decided that in order to be ready to uh, fight against the big ones, the big players, you will see later on who are they, we needed to be uh, together and to have more weight together. So we finally ended up with a, a team of four. Uh, now the Cloud Team Alliance has expanded, including also Germany and Belgium, etc. But at the starting point, we were four. And we were Enter Cloud Suite, which is us uh, for Italy. Numergy, everybody knows Numergy, is one of the biggest players of OpenStack in, uh, in, um, in Europe and France, now is acquired by uh, SFR. Mio, formerly Portugal Telecom, and, and Gigas, uh, pure uh, KVM based, uh, the homebrewed uh, solution for Spain and Latin America, and they're growing at a very fast pace. So we built this team and we started to build our answers to the RFP. Our guiding principles were this. We are not big, we are small. So we decided the number could be a, a viable option to answer to the, the size. Uh, resource optimization, because the more we are, the more we can share capacity. So reducing cost uh, for everybody. And having a team uh, that brings value to uh, a brand, which is Cloud Team Alliance, uh, could be better than running alone. Uh, we are very focused on customers. Since we have not huge as the global players, we can just focus more on customers. We can hear them, we can help them and support them. Country value. Europe is uh, uh, a group, a community of countries, very different in languages, in traditions, but not that different in uh, uh, beliefs and, uh, and uh, fundamental values. So we thought it could be very important for us to build an alliance to, to be ready for Europe. And the partner ecosystem, because some of them really work hard with partner to develop their network. So here's our proposal. We looked out uh, around uh, our respective infrastructure and we found out that our uh, existing Enter Cloud Suite platform was out 80% ready to answer to all these specifications. So what is Enter Cloud Suite? Enter Cloud Suite is a, a public cloud developed since uh, we started in 2010 and we released the first region in Milan in 2013 and then we released the uh, second and third region in, uh, on Easter 2014. It's based in Milan, where we live, and Frankfurt and Amsterdam. We are connected to the main uh, uh, internet exchange in Europe, so we have a very powerful network. We have a 10 gig, reg uh, 10 gig Ethernet over STH ring connecting all the dots you see. We have plans to expand also in London, Paris, maybe in Brussels. And, um, so there's a lot of capacity between all the regions. But every region is, is, a, is a single silo, not connected with the other ones, except for two, three things. One is users, obviously. Every user is uh, 
configured on any region. The other one is object storage. Every time you just snapshot something in one region, it's immediately propagated to uh, the other regions following the unique as possible Swift uh, uh, routing policy. And since uh, snapshots are stored into Swift, every time you take a snapshot of an instance in one region, you immediately can find it available for a restore in another region. So it's pretty uh, comfortable to have for your disaster recovery solutions. In the middle, we have <clears throat> three possible access uh, interfaces. One is uh, our dashboard. We have developed our dashboard just to improve the user experience uh, that you may have with Horizon, which is very basic. I won't say any more. Uh, I won't say more. And ov obviously, the CLI. In order to provide geographical replication uh, between the regions, we developed our own uh, uh, DNS as a service based on an Anycast network. So we picked the best out of Route 53 from Amazon and from Dean DNS. Uh, Route 53 is based on geo IP tables and uh, Dean DNS on Anycast. So we put them together. So you can have uh, standard DNS, but you, you can also have uh, HA between different regions. So if one region fails, you have an L checks changing the DNS resolution and moving your traffic towards another region. And you can also have GeoDNS based on the region where you ask the query, you are answered with a different resolution IP. And also we have partnered with a big European and now global partner, Ibernia Networks, formerly Atrato, to provide CDN. They have 200 POPs in the world and they provide distribution and low latency access. Uh, moreover, they also provide streaming services on top of CDN. So the data physically resides in Europe, but you can access it at a low, very fast speed and low latency everywhere, from everywhere in the world. Obviously, we also plugged in heat for automation. We use Silometer for accounting, and then we plug our billing system to provide all your uh, financial information. We are open source uh, uh, at our heart. Uh, we use these kind of technologies. Look if you can find the intruder. There's one in the picture and the middle line. And uh, we, we are really fond with open source. Uh, we liked OpenStack for being open source and collaborative, which are not always the same thing. And uh, also, uh, we are not paying any single license to uh, anybody to run our um, infrastructure. This is very important um, because um, we, need to, we need a lot of software to run computing. We use KVM, obviously. We use Swift or object storage. We provide network. We're using only open source uh, components like OpenVSwitch and L3 Agent, etc. We have developed our own DNS. We run CDN just with the partners. Uh, they ju we just mm, resell someone else's service, uh, and we are working hard with, to deploy some alerting and monitoring services. Uh, who were the competitors in this, um, in this challenge? Okay, you can see Lotu as the middle column. Uh, we had Verizon, um, which was actually participating with uh, former Terramark, I think. Uh, Accenture and Comprex means Asia. And uh, we have Atos with some Siemens acquired stuff in VMware, IBM with SoftLayer, and BT with VMware, definitely. CSE, I don't remember. Us with OpenStack, Telecom Italia Sparkle, which means uh, Amazon Web Services, IS Group BV, I don't remember who they are, but I know for sure there's no OpenStack in that competition. So, the evaluation was declared uh, initially from the beginning. So it was a document saying, we will, we will test your, your installation. I just switched off again. We will test your infrastructure doing this and this and this and this. So it was uh, pretty helpful. And um, one thing, we got um, a letter. I, I was, you know, in Italy, in August, everything stops. I was at the seaside, everybody was at the seaside, and I got on 28, August 28, I got this letter from the EU saying, are you sure you're going to provide these prices because these prices are abnormally low compared to the other ones? And that's why it was so important not to pay any license when you run your OpenStack cloud, okay? Abnormally low. Uh, anybody confident with this movie? Okay. 
So this was the award uh, on lot one, BT, one single uh, winner, 10 million euros for uh, uh, private YAS. On lot two, public YAS, BT, or again, IBM with SoftLayer, Atos, Accenture with Microsoft, uh, and the Cloud Team Alliance. Okay, this was very important. Look how big they are and how small are we. So we did it uh, against any odd. And lot three was won by Telecom Italian Sparkle with uh, Amazon, Accenture again with Microsoft, Atos and IBM with SoftLayer. So what we learned uh, from this uh, uh, thing, uh, we were obviously very proud of the result. We couldn't expect we could go so far, but uh, we understood that being European is very important so far for Europe, for Europe, uh, a European agency, for the European Union. It's very important because of not only for the political, but also for the values uh, Europe brings. Uh, it's, hard it's a hard time for global players. I don't know if you are aware of the safe harbor issue. On October 6, 2015, the Court of Justice sentenced that the safe harbor was illegal, and then it was uh, uh, struck down. Uh, because in 2011, a guy from Austria, um, I don't remember the name, he is a uh, civil rights activist, he just asked Facebook to tell him please, I want to know all the personal data you have re related to me. And they provided a 1,244 pages document with a lot of stuff, more than what should be in place. He discovered that Facebook had not deleted some contents that he was supposed to be uh, deleting. So uh, it should Facebook, Ireland, and uh, Ireland politely forward the, 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 the problem to the Court of Justice, and uh, four years later, the Court of Justice sentenced the safe harbor to be uh, illegal. What is the safe harbor? Is the treat. Uh, it's uh, a deal between uh, the European Union and the US Trade uh, Commission, I don't know the exact name, by which uh, US-based companies can uh, manipulate and you can, um, how can I say, manipulate personal data in Europe for European citizens. Uh, they can do this uh, only if they assure that the security measures they take are enough uh, and compatible with European law. In this case, Facebook was not uh, compliant, and so all the framework collapsed. It was replaced six months later by the privacy shield, which is almost the same thing, but. So there's a problem now with the new rules uh, in uh, in data protection. Uh, it's uh, a greenfield now. Everybody can play his game, but it's game, but the rules shall, shall be the same for anybody, okay? No more advantages for uh, non-European companies. Everybody should play with the same rules. Federation is a must. I've been uh, to uh, countless uh, meetings about federation, but what it means federation here is uh, competition. It means different companies, different uh, commercial interests for companies that need to join their forces in order to provide a larger, a broader set of services to broader customers, institutional customers. It's not just academic, it's something it's uh, very important for small public cloud providers. When we started four years ago, five years ago, everybody would say, okay, it's, there's Amazon, um, you're doomed. Okay, uh, it was not true. It was not true, but federation was uh, the key about this. And Europe wants European companies like us to grow. They need European providers, okay? Because uh, even if the NSA provides all the clarifications and papers, etc., they're not safe with bringing the data from Europe to the US. So, OpenStack enabled us to do something we were not supposed to do, we thought we could not do. So, thanks to all the community for supporting us. And uh, what happens now? Uh, we have to sell. We have to go door by door. There's a, on the Super User Magazine, there's an interview, and I said it's like in the 50s. Yeah, you have to sell door by door, like brushes. No, no we sell OpenStack, we sell cloud services. We have to convince 
uh, every IT manager in the EU that using OpenStack, using DevOps, using CI, CD is important, is future-proof, you have to change the way you work. Like Boris Rasky said today, it's a matter of people and processes. And there, I can assure you, there's a huge amount of work to do on people and processes. But it's something most of them are uh, unaware of, but some of them are very aware. I found the European Environment Agency, they have just released uh, the perfect integration with Docker and uh, Jenkins. They are the maintainers of this stuff. They already use containers and tons of containers. So there are some exceptions. And there are more tenders uh, ongoing, so more opportunities for us to participate. So I would just close my presentation with a, a call to action. If there is any European operator here that wants to join us, uh, we are looking for companies that want to join our alliance in order to share our capacities. Sharing capacity means to have a common approach to the market and to provide what you are able to do in terms of capacity, in terms of uh, resources, uh, infrastructure, and skills, obviously. So that's it. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I would be glad to answer. Yes, please. Uh, you don't have a microphone, so... A any questions, please I refer them to the wireless microphones in the audience. There's a microphone over there. Sorry for bothering you. Hi. Hi. Could you tell me more specifically um, what the EU liked about OpenStack? Um, just expand on all those points for me. What they liked more? Uh, maybe? What they didn't like. OK. <clears throat> uh, they liked the fact of being open, open source. They can check how the code works. Uh, none of the other competitors was open source. So especially on the security side, they were uh, much, they had a lot of relief uh, with us. Okay, they can check the code, they can know everything about it, no obscurity about that. This was the main thing. The second one was that uh, if they have chosen us, uh, portability would be assured. Okay, once you start using the Amazon APIs, you can just move to another name, Amazon region. You cannot move to another Amazon provider. And uh, these are the two main things. What they didn't like is that, uh, that OpenStack brings an idea of real cloud. Cloud native applications are um, requested. Uh, you need to cope with some uh, things you're not used to if you come from uh, a VMware world. You must imagine that behind the U now, there's a huge amount of data centers and servers run with VMware and Microsoft stuff. So what, what they didn't, it's not that they didn't, they did like it, but it's pretty awkward for them to cope with now. So that's what we are working now, to explain what cloud is, how you can leverage OpenStack in your infrastructure. Did I answer to you? Okay. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> one, have one question. Ah, sorry. So you mentioned that the EU is very concerned about well, security in general. Um, did you find, what difficulties did you experience in terms of uh, one, first bringing in OpenStack into their environments and two, bringing in any updates, uh, whether it be from different, uh, like Icehouse to Juno or Liberty or such? Okay. So the upgrade uh, nightmare you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we are currently running on Juno version. Uh, we have plans to move uh, very soon uh, to Kilo. Uh, the upgrade process takes a lot of time. Uh, we don't use any um, facilitator like uh, Fuel or other commercial software. We just run Ubuntu. And so we have to manual update and use backports uh, for all the releases. Um, so the question was, how do they cope with the security and the updates, the security updates for OpenStack? Right. Did you, did you have a problem bringing it in to their environment? No, we are not bringing it in to the. No, no, we are a public cloud provider. So they are, we are bringing them into us. 
Okay, so the problem is migrating. The first question they asked us was, can I import my v VMware machines? Okay, yes. You can do, but why? This, is, well, this was the first uh, issue they had. Uh, there was no issue. They, they didn't ask anything about upgrades, uh, et cetera. Okay. Hi, can, can you clarify on lot one, lot two, lot three? Are all these companies approved and you are one of them? All these companies? Uh, are, uh, like what's the process, are, are they all selected? Yeah, uh, the first one, lot one, BT, one single winner. Okay. Every, every public, every private YAS contract shall go to BT. There's no competition. For lot two and lot three, it's a reopening. Now, these five are able to uh, race, uh, compete, to bring the, the contract. So every time the, an agency has a need for cloud services, okay. they just publish a request to all these five, only to these five, not to the other, the okay. other ones, and uh, the, the best wins every okay. time. Okay. So, Sometimes we lose because it's more Microsoft oriented. Uh, sometimes right. we win because it's more uh, DevOps right. uh, enabled or more future proof, let's say. We are three separate slots, so we participate only in lot two department, right. but the lot one is the same. And were there any uh, objections for AWS, particularly? Uh, was there any, anything that they said we are not going to go AWS because they have Frankfurt and uh, um, Ireland, right? One in Ireland as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there any reason because the data, Amazon says if you're storing in that data center, it will never go out of that? No. Yeah. Uh, is there any reason why Amazon was did not participate in that or was not selected? Do you know? I, I, they okay. didn't tell us the reason why the other one was okay. were excluded, but they won on lot three, so I think that was not the point. Uh, Amazon, I know for sure that Amazon has, has a lot of uh, documentation uh, that proves that the data is not moved without your consent from uh, European regions to the US-based regions. So uh, I'm sure that was not the problem. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>